Cushman, and in 15 minutes allowed by any question there may be from the members of the City Council. So this is only about the pensions. Then before we start, we're going to move it. Uh, <coughs> Councilman Morello, you're just going to open it up. Just presentation. Okay. We can't find the. Yeah, we can't find the maintenance person, right? All right, I'm going down there. Thank you, Council President. Uh, be before I start, my name is Robert Cushman. Uh, I just want to thank the Council for allowing me to have the privilege of speaking before you tonight. I, I also want to thank the audience for coming out tonight and listening. And uh, I want to put a special thanks to Councilman Morola for uh, proposing the resolution tonight that allowed me to speak. Uh, before I speak, I think I would be remiss if I didn't thank Councilman Donovan uh, for all the years of service that he's provided to the city. Uh, I did have an opportunity to serve with the Councilman when he chaired the Finance Committee, and, and I, I just want to say he did a great job. Congratulations, Councilman. Uh, the theme of my presentation tonight is it's our time. And, and what I mean by saying it's, it's our time, you know, we look at what's been going on in our country in Washington and the bickering and the extreme positions on the political aisles, and, and we see nothing's getting done. You know, we're, we're pushing off problems to the future. So, you know, my theme is, you know, we as citizens, as employees, as taxpayers, it's, it's our time now to demand uh, change for things to get done. Uh, when I, the issues I'm going to talk about today, they're not unique to Warwick. And, you know, I think Warwick can be unique in terms of developing a plan to address these issues. So how is Warwick going to develop a, a successful plan to meet our challenges? One word, teamwork. One of the things I realized over the years is that, you know, and even from my short time on the uh, city council, is that you can't dictate a solution to a problem. The problem first needs to be identified and it needs to be acknowledged. Warwick's future prosperity depends on the willingness of all the stakeholders to come together and work as one team. So, so who do I mean by stakeholders? I mean the citizens of Warwick. I mean, the employees that work in Warwick and provide the services, the businesses, and finally the political leaders. So let me give you an, an example of, of how teamwork can lead to a sustainable success. How many people are New England Patriot fans? I, I, I bet you there's a lot. And you know what? We just won another division title yesterday, 12 out of 14 years, a very successful franchise. If you think back, about 20 years ago, we could probably count the number of wins on one hand from the New England Patriots. So what happened? There was a new philosophy within the team, and it was a, talked about teamwork. When you, when you see Bill Belichick have a press conference, what's he always talking about? Moving forward, the next game. Now that's not to say he's not taking a look at, well, what did we do in the past games, and where can we improve, and where did we make mistakes? You still need to take a look at the past, but you always need to move on to the future. And, and one of the th characteristics, I think, of the team is no one individual is bigger or more important than the success of the entire team. So, you know, the reason I, I put this up here is I, you know, I just saw this, and it talked about the Patriots offer a lesson in team building. The Patriots have a, a can-do attitude, and I think if this philosophy can be developed within the city, you know, it's something that will uh, uh, help Warwick to be successful in the future. So the purpose of my presentation tonight I've examined the budget over the last 10 years, and what I want to do is just point out to you the budgetary trends that have occurred over the last 10 years. I want to talk about is spending sustainable, and then talk about constructing a roadmap for the future. Now there's three points I hope you take away from this presentation. Number one, Warwick is facing a serious budgetary challenge. Number two, our current budgetary philosophy needs to change. And number three, all stakeholders have to work together to find a viable solution. Now, 
you know, this might be hard for some people to believe, but, you know, I, I go, I was in Day's Market the other day, and people still believe I'm on the city council sometimes, and they, and they come up to me and say, hey, Bob, what's going on? How come my taxes are going up every year? You know, you know, my taxes are going up every year. The roads are in terrible conditions. You know, my uh, my daughter's complaining about the, the leaky uh, roof inside her classroom. You know, employees want to know when are they going to get another raise? Uh, is my pension secure? You know, these are all questions that we need to answer. You know, this past summer, the firefighters came into City Hall and they testified to the council that their rescue equipment is failing. So, you know, we need to examine these cases and, and look at these issues and find out, you know, what's going on and get some answers. Now, this chart right here, and I, I hope I don't disappoint a lot of people because I think people think that I'm going to come to with a ton of charts and graphs and this and that and whatever. But I'm going to show two simple graphs tonight that depict the trends in the city. Now, this, this chart here came straight from the 2004 budget manual. If you go back to 10 years, you will see this pie chart in the 2004 fiscal year budget. This chart came here, came from the 2014 fiscal year. These are not my charts. These are city charts. But there's two simple things that this chart is telling you that you need to take a look at. These, this is the allocation amount for all the different uh, departments within the city in 2004. And, and the biggest trend that you could see here is the growth in the employee benefit segment from 31% of the budget to 42% of the budget. All the other departments within the city are being reduced. For example, social services was 7% of the budget 10 years ago. Now it's 4.4%. So, you know, we need to take a look at that, and, and this is a factual trend, and understand what is causing this. Now, the other chart, this is a different perspective. Now, this is a chart that I did, and it takes a slightly different look. It looks at the budget over the last 10 years, but what it focuses, focuses on is where does every new dollar of taxes go in terms of the city budget? Over the last 10 years, there was $29 million that went to the city budget. Now, what I want you to focus on here is that from this point of the dollar to this little black line here is 51%. That 51% of the, that $1 went for employee retirement costs, legacy costs, pensions, and health care. The other 46% went for active employee uh, benefits. That left us with three cents, three cents on a dollar, and it was so small, I decided I had to put three pennies on the bottom just to depict to you, you know, what that represented. And what that represents is three cents goes to every other line item in the budget. And what am I, ta what am I talking about when I say every other line item? I'm talking about firefighter trucks. I'm talking about uh, money to purchase um, asphalt road repave equipment, anything that the DPW purchases, anything that the police department purchases, three cents on the dollar, 97 cents goes to personnel cost, more than half, 51 cents is going towards retired employee benefits. Now, if you work for a small business or even work for a large corporation and 51 cents of your new revenue was going towards employees who worked in the past, you know, there might be a, a situation where that business would no longer be in business in the future. Now let's look at some up this impacts. I just picked out a couple of budgeted uh, areas and, and, you know, I have some material I want to pass out that anybody in the audience can take. It's the actual 10 year numbers. So you can actually look by line item for every single line item in the budget and you can see the trend and where the spending is going in 10 years. Social services budget. The uh, Trudeau Center serves the disabled. The House of Hope serves the homeless. Their budget's been cut 40 percent in 10 years. We took those dollars that we cut and we allocated it back to the uh, legacy cost payments. At a time when more and more people in the city are needing assistance, we're cutting these budgets. Let's take a look at after school programs. There's been many after-school programs that have been, been cut in the city. Uh, 
we had a, a, a real unique program in the city called Marine Science, where I think the kids were able to uh, go on to the boats and go out on Narragansett Bay and be able to study the impact of the waterways. That program's gone. You know, I mean, we could even talk about other programs, advanced learning programs are gone too. And, and when, if you ever talk to a real estate agent, what are they gonna tell you? High performing schools with diverse programs attract people to the community and they increase property values. Let's go on to the DPW budget. 10 years ago, we were funding the road repair budget by 65% more than we are today. And, and I, I don't think I really need to say too much more about road repair. You probably had to dodge some potholes when you came down here at City Hall. Now, Do it. Pen pensions are part of the budget. Okay. All right. So let's let's talk about the education impact. School budgets. The schools have their own challenges. I understand that. But let's just dispel a notion once and for all tonight. The school budget is not driving up the property taxes in the city. And actually, if you look at the school budget, the school budget today, it's less than the school budget of 2008. So what we're looking at is practically every new tax dollar in the city since 2008 has been allocated to the city side of the budget. So what's the big challenge? What's the elephant in the room? The, it's the issue we need to acknowledge, and that's what the elephant in the room depicts. Our retirement benefits, our, ret our retirement benefits are growing at such a rate that all other areas of the budget are being negatively impacted. I just showed you over half of every new dollar collected in the city is being allocated to legacy costs, pensions, and health care. Is this sustainable? Will this expense continue to grow and require more and more tax dollars in the future? Now, let's talk about the unfunded liabilities. You know, some people might be surprised, but the uh, health care liability in the city is funded at 0%. So, you know, when we hear about, you know, one pension plan being funded at 80%, 70%, health care is funded at 0%. Five years ago, the uh, pension funding ratio of all the pensions were 57%. Now it's 50%. Six years ago, the unfunded liabilities of all the pension plans was $100 million and less than it was today. So, you know, my point is, is that the trends are showing that the four pun all four pension plans, the funding ratios are decreasing and the unfunded liabilities are increasing. So what does this matter? You know, some people have stated that the liability 20 years ago was large and we got by. Others claim that we're being alarmist. Most of the unfunded liability is due, to, due in the future. We're never going to have to pay it all at once, and it doesn't pose an immediate threat to the city since it's going to pay can be paid over time. Well, let me dispel that notion tonight. And, and the way to do it, I, I want to do an analogy here. Let's just imagine we have a family with two kids. They have a $150,000 mortgage, two car payments, several credit card payments with significant balances. They earn just enough money to make the minimum required payment each month. Now, in reality, they should probably be paying a lot more, but just the minimum monthly payment to reduce the debt. Now. In Warwick, we're doing the same thing. And I'm going to try to play a clip here from the actuarial uh, expert who came in in March of 2013, and he was explaining the fact that really Warwick should be putting more money. I'm going to see if this works. If it doesn't work, I won't be playing any more clips. So when somebody says our pension plan is 80 percent funded, or 90% funded, and so when somebody says our pension plan is 80% funded or 90% funded, and 
wallets. And, you know, we're doing great. This is zero percent funded, right? That's correct. You also mentioned in question one that the um, actuarial accrued liability for both plans for city and school is two uh, is two hundred and seven. Yep, if the combined results of those. I'm not sure if you're going to hear that, but I, I actually played the wrong clip. The sec, the second. Okay. Well, the second clip talked about the fact that what the experts are telling us is we should be putting more money into our pension funds, but we we've just seen the effect of new dollars already going into that. So you know the question is, can we afford to do something like that? We're already cutting other areas of the budget. And, and where, where is the uh, additional money going to come from? So let's talk about this now. Let's say the family devised a plan to pay off their debt for just one credit card without considering all the other household budget prior priorities. You would probably call that irresponsible, but that's exactly what we're doing in Warwick. The, the experts came to the city council and they testified that they don't consider every other area of the budget. They don't consider the firefighters budget they don't consider the social services budget they're not looking at what's the impact of us paying for the uh, pension and health care liabilities and what the effect is going to be on every other program in the city now we just seen what it was I just pointed that out so let's just now imagine that this family continues to rack up more debt on its credit cards they take out a 20-year home equity loan to buy a new car that'll last 10 or 12 years that doesn't make sense we're proposing to take out 20-year bonds to repair our roads that will last 10 years. Same thing. So what's going to happen? What's my point? My, my point is as the, un, as the liabilities increase each month, the combined minimum required payments are also going to increase. And in the case of the family, if they're not earning additional income to at least cover the additional expense, they're going to have to cut back on other areas of the budget to make the payments. Now let's imagine a great recession hits and the family income drops. So when the roof starts leaking, is the answer to move the house plants under the leak to catch the drips? Of course not. When the youngest child needs braces, is the answer to tell her not to smile for this year's freshman class pitches? No. But you know, that's what we're doing to, in, in the city. We're, we're taking uh, uh, funds from other areas of the budget and we're moving them to the um, uh, pay for those legacy costs. So now let's talk about the impact on the employees. For the city's employees, they ha you haven't received a raise in three years. Now, back in 2011, and I, I have the clip, but you know, I'm not sure if it'll work to play it, but um, what they talked about was that this is gonna be the new norm in the city. Let, let me see if I can play it. I think it's a very important clip for everybody out here to hear today. contributions, which we've just been discussing by the city, will almost necessarily end up reducing future wage increases for the employees. So even we're not explicit employees. So, so what the expert basically said was that rising pension costs are going to result in less raises for employees in the future. Let's talk about select pension COLA uh, cost of living adjustments. Can we really afford to give 3% COLA increases to some retirees despite the fact that we have a $328 million unfunded liability, the overall funding is at 50%, and our health care funding at zero? You know, something's not right when we tell the employees we can't give you a raise, but we can give some people raises. That's not right. Municipal retirees haven't received a COLA in five years. And they're probably not going to receive one for many more years. I have a clip on here. I'm not going to play it. But what basically the actual said in 2013 is that the municipal employees have actually had a, a, a decrease in their benefits. So my point is we need to start leveling the playing field between active and retired employees. Our current philosophy is inconsistent. The entire cost bur burden is being placed on the individuals that are coming to work each day providing the services to Warwick citizens. It's not fair. So is, is it unreasonable to ask retired employees to be part of the team plan so we can pro provide raises to the active employees, so we can repair our roads, so we can fund our education? 
you know, it, it's time that we start addressing these issues. This is a front page uh, newspaper article from the Warwick Beacon about two years ago, and the question was asked, can we afford it? And, and I think really the question should have been, can we afford business as usual? You know, we're not a mom and pop dime, five and dime store. We have a $288 million operating budget. We're, we're one of the largest employers in the entire state. Uh, you know, we have put together a 20 year pension improvement plan with the state of Rhode Island that's going to cost us $300 million in the next 14 years. 300 million new tax dollars in the next 14 years. We're going to knock the liabilities down by $5 million. At the end of the 14 years, we're still going to owe 280 something million dollars. We've already seen the effect right now of shifting the budget trend, shifting monies into uh, the legacy costs. What's going to happen when we do this? The last clip, and I, like I said, I apologize for not being able to play it. The, Experts basically saying, I'm going to quote, quote, it's not my job to worry about how you're going to fund this. It's just to tell you how you're going to, the cost of it, unquote. That's pretty frightening when you think about the fact that as the city leaders have been following the recommendations of the experts to set our spending priorities. They're not looking at any other area of the budget. They're not looking at the, the uh, uh, public safety budget. They're not looking at the DPW budget. They're telling us that this is the pension plan and this is what you need to fund it. There's no new money coming from the state. We're going to have a $100 million deficit when Governor Gina Raimondo comes in, so we can't expect any new state aid. You know, and, and what's going to happen to economic development in the city if we continue to raise taxes? All these questions are unanswered. You know, we just saw a 1,500 home uh, tax sale advertised in the Warwick Beacon recently. If you think about that, 1,500 homes, let's say that affects four people. That's 6,000 people in Warwick. That's 7% of our population. 7% of our population was facing a tax closure. This wasn't our property tax either. So I think... You know, the taxpayers and the employee deserve an answer to, this, to, to these questions. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here tonight. So, to wrap it up. We need to build a roadmap to the future. And what I mean by that is, you know, I, I'm probably one of the worst person, guys at direction. So when I travel, I have to use my deep GPS system. I want to make sure I'm going in the right direction. Right now, Warwick is rudderless. No one's taken ownership of this problem. You know, I, I just presented data from 10 years ago that show the adverse effects of what's been going on for 10 years. We need to change our approach and stop looking at establishing a roadway into the future. We need to hire the experts. We have the experts. We need to demand that the experts come in and build a model so we know how much revenue we're going to need 5, 10, 15, and 20 years from now and what our expenses are going to be. We can do this. The actuaries can come in and they, they can show us the next 20 years how much it's going to cost us. You know, there, was a, there was an article in the Sunday paper and it talked about a 26-member panel. And I, I brought it here. And what they're doing, it's a strategic plan, uh, uh, a strategic panel to develop a five-year educational strategic plan. We need to do that in work. We need to have a strategic plan. We need everybody to be involved. Taxpayers, employees, politicians. The numbers I'm talking about tonight demonstrate an that and that adverse impact on our current path. These aren't my numbers. You know, you're, you're hooting and hollering and stuff. These aren't my numbers. These numbers came directly from the budget. That chart came directly from the budget. I'm only the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger here. You know, as I said in the beginning of the presentation, you know, it's our time. We want to develop a viable, sustainable plan for the future. You know, we want the we want to be able to have good programs. We want to be able to have good services. We want to be able to give the employees raises. They deserve raises. So, you know, I agree with the first speaker. We should have the actuarials come back. We should have them come back and there's certain things we should demand them to do. We should build this model. 
I shouldn't have to be the one standing here tonight looking at 10 years worth of data. Has anybody ever gone to a budget hearing? We look at two years worth of data. We look at the past year and we look at the current year. We need to look into the future. Uh, I want to thank the council. I want to thank the audience and everybody for listening. Uh, I have a documentation that the audience members can take that shows the 10 years worth of uh, budget history. If anybody wants to take a look at that, I have documents here and you're, you're welcome to take a look. And these are all the line items uh, over, over the last 10 years in the city. I also have some documentation for the city council. I think it could be a good assistance to you for the council auditor, for the mayor, uh, his chief of staff and his, his finance uh, director. So if anybody has any questions, uh, other than that, thank you very much. That's for questions from the council. Councilman Gallucci, 